the basis for the argument of climate change is a so-called greenhouse effect. Today, I'm going to give you some detailed discussion about this idea in relation to its origin, the experimental observation, and the latest theoretical research. I will start my talk with this uh, website uh, made by NASA for children. Well, greenhouse is uh, not a complicated idea. Every family who has a backyard can build a greenhouse to grow vegetable or flowers. The physical principle for the greenhouse is rather simple. The air confined into this uh, glass house will be warmed up due to the presence of solar radiation. Because of there is no chance for the air to transfer the thermal energy with the outside, therefore, the air inside the greenhouse is getting warmer. Nevertheless, if we just uh, tell people that uh, our Earth can be considered as the huge greenhouse, well, that is a big jump, right? However, that is uh, exactly what NASA attempted to tell children this way. In other words, if you understand what is a greenhouse in your backyard, then you should be able to understand why the climate change. This change means that the surface temperature will eventually go up noticeably. Of course, we know that there is no physical greenhouse around the Earth, as children will eventually realize. But just some infrared uh, absorption by the certain amount of the air in the atmosphere. The solar radiation after absorbing by the Earth will be emitted so that the Earth will keep its uh, thermal uh, equilibrium balance with the presence of the solar radiation. The greenhouse effect uh, hypothesis suggests that the atmosphere can play the role as a reflector or radiation emitter, such that some of the emitted radiation by the surface would be absorbed and then re-emitted downward into the surface. So that is the idea of the greenhouse effect. Let's go to some quantitative. If we just consider that the sun in the distance, the Earth will be uh, illuminated by the solar radiation. And uh, how do we work out the energy balance equation? Well, we can assume that the, the solar energy absorbed by the Earth can be worked out by the effective area, such as this uh, circle with the radius R equal to the radius of Earth, multiply the solar radiation intensity, S. That is according to the definition of what uh, the radiation intensity is. The intensity is simply equal to the ratio of the power to the area. So that is how we calculate the sonar radiation onto the Earth. Here we have introduced the factor one minus alpha, which describes the effective reflection of the sonar radiation before the sonar radiation arrive at the surface of a solid Earth. 
eventually you will realize that uh, atmosphere should be considered as part of the Earth's surface. That is how to calculate the power uh, in. How about uh, the power out? Well, we can argue that after a certain amount of time, the absorbed solar energy were evenly distributed around the Earth. Of course, this is just a sort of experiment. And that the intensity of Earth multiply the area of a surface where it determines the power output. So that is how we work out the, uh, the two powers. According to the uh, energy conservation, or in this particular case, in the form of power balance condition, the power in and power out must be equal. So that is why we can obtain this uh, so-called power balance equation. If we just simplify this equation, we can solve for the radiation intensity of Earth. So this subscript E represents Earth. What else can we do? Well, in history, there is a famous empirical law is called the Stephen Boltzmann law, shown that the intensity of thermal radiation will be proportional to the surface temperature to the power of four. Multiply a constant, sigma is called the Stephen Boltzmann constant. In general cases, because this uh, radiation is uh, dependent on the physical property of the, of the surface, therefore, we have multiplied a constant sigma. This sigma is known as the emissivity of thermal radiation. In the case of the Earth's infrared radiation, we can obtain this simple formula. I sub E equal to epsilon multiply sigma multiply T uh, surface temperature to the power of four. If we combine these two formula, then we can solve this. Uh, we can find the formula for the surface temperature in term of this uh, uh, constant. Again, it's not very complicated. Now here we must uh, point it out that the emissivity is very important parameter in the Stephen Boltzmann law. The emissivity will equal to one or 100% for an ideal body is called the black body. It's not the color, but just the ability to emit thermal radiation. So that is the maximum value for the emissivity which is 100% or unit. However, for real object of different kinds, the emissivity is always less than one, which is called gray body. This is very important. Another important factor is that the currently observed global mean value of surface temperature Ts is very close to 288 Kelvin at this moment. Yeah. It's pretty stable, I can tell you, it's very stable. Oh, by the way, this alpha is called the albedo of the Earth, which is uh, 0 0.3 or 30%. In other words, nearly 30% of arriving solar radiation will be reflected by the, uh, the Earth's atmosphere system. Now, if we just use this number, we can build this table. That's a very interesting table. If we assume that the Earth can be treated as a, a black body, then we can assume that the emissivity is a unit. 
if we just substitute the observed albedo 0.3, we can calculate the mean surface temperature 255, which is uh, significantly lower than the measured temperature at the moment. To be exact, it's 33 Kelvin. So that is a starting point of considering introducing the greenhouse effect idea. Because apparently, if we just assume the Earth is a perfect black body, then its uh, surface temperature would be uh, 33 Kelvin lower than the measured temperature. So that is apparently the discrepancy as people argued, right? But of course, as I told you in my other video, this is not the case because one cannot simply assume the earth as a perfect black body. To be specific, if you look at uh, uh, last row of this table, if we simply adjust the emissivity of Earth's atmosphere system at 0 0.6, the surface temperature will be exactly equal to the observed temperature. So there is no discrepancy at all if we just treat the Earth as a gray body rather than a black body. Of course, this is the latest story, but if we follow this storyline, people will get concerned. First, the people very concerned probably even before this, this exact temperature difference is available. The first person uh, make his remark on the function of the atmosphere would be uh, free A. You know, free A is a famous mathematician. Also, he have done some uh, thermal conduction research. He just uh, casually remarked that uh, perhaps that the atmosphere can acting as kind of the thermal absorber. That's why the temperature of the Earth would be not too cold compared with the moon. And uh, so that is the early remark made by Fourier. Uh, by 19th century, uh, Tyndall was the first person actually did some measurement to demonstrate that a certain kind of gases can absorb certain amount of infrared radiation. You know, the infrared radiation is referred to the, uh, the radiation re-emitted by the, by the Earth. However, from his experimental setup, one can argue that his measurement is far from quantitative. At the most, what he can claim is that certain amount of gas, including carbon dioxide and uh, water vapor, can absorb certain amount of the infrared radiation. That's all. Next is this uh, chemist. Arrhenius, uh, based on the uh, idea of the, both Fourier and the Tindu, made some theoretical estimate by using the proportion of the atmosphere pressure and the, the percentage of the uh, CO2, he made some dramatic uh, result suggesting that the CO2 play a significant role in determining the surface temperature of Earth. In other words, the more CO2 gases in our atmosphere, the higher the temperature our Earth would be. 
Unfortunately, Arena's estimate was uh, challenged by a physicist whose name is well known. His surname is well known, not his uh, first name. It's called uh, Khalil Armstrong. Now, Khalil Armstrong is actually the son of another Armstrong. It's called uh, uh, Adish Armstrong. Adish Armstrong is famous for his uh, work in the optical spectroscopy research. Actually, the unit for the wavelengths is used his uh, the surname A for A with a circle at the top, which happened to be the size of hydrogen atom. Okay, so his uh, can be considered as a father of modern optical spectroscopy. But this work is not by him, but by his son. And his son has, uh, based on his uh, research assistant, who did some measurement for, for him. And he wrote a paper and published in 1900, almost one year before the paper uh, published by Max Planck which play the role as, uh, as a big, uh, the foundation of for the quantum mechanics. And in his paper, he actually did some quantitative estimate that how much infrared radiation could possibly absorbed by carbon dioxide. This diagram looks very familiar because it's actually almost exactly the same as the uh, Planck uh, black body radiation uh, graph. Okay. Remember, at that time, there's no proper theoretical explanation of the, of the thermal radiation. Obviously, Armstrong, the junior, actually introduced the empirical formula to describe this curve in order to work out something quantitative. So this, this work by itself is very important in the history of physics. Now, because he can draw this uh, uh, distribution of the infrared uh, radiation at a different temperature, it's very hard to say. This is a T, so the lower one, uh, the temperature is uh, uh, zero degree Celsius. And the, third, the second one is T equal to eight degrees Celsius. And the, the, the top one is uh, temperature equal to 100 degrees Celsius. So from this diagram, you can see, unlike uh, others like uh, Tyndall or the Arrhenius, he's act actually talking about uh, quantitative analysis. I'm not surprised because he must be influenced by his father, right? Of course, uh, let, let's talk about his conclusion, okay, his conclusion. And uh, he's argued that the contribution of the infrared radiation by the atmosphere is mainly by the water vapor rather than uh, CO2. To be exact, the absorption by the CO2 does not amount to more than one fifth percent of the total sonar radiation. So basically he argues that actually the exact number is 16%, the maximum, according to the estimate based on this diagram. The, the maximum uh, absorption is, is less than 20%. Well, in, the, in, in nowadays, and uh, his uh, study was rejected and because uh, if you just look for any publication after 1980s, that uh, percentages can jump to over one third or over, over 33%. Uh, that is the percentage for the uh, infrared absorption by uh, carbon dioxide. Uh, because of his work, he was considered or labeled as the first 
skepticist about the global warming. <laughs> well, it's not bad. It's uh, being called as a uh, skepticist is actually a owner uh, for a great physicist. Because if you look back, even the even the uh, Robert Boyer, the father of the modern chemistry, uh, called himself as a skeptical chemist or alchemist. Okay. And uh, well, of course, we're not we're not going to some detail, but but just mentioned that uh, uh, the modern uh, people criticized uh, Khalil's work. And uh, they blame that he didn't pay much attention to his uh, research assistant who made uh, an error, about 100% uh, error <laughs> without uh, clarify to him. But uh, they never blame his father. <laughs> his father wouldn't allow him to publish this uh, paper without double check the experimental result. Do you think so? Now, in order to uh, explain the discrepancy, so that is a discrepancy they're trying to overcome, who believe that uh, without uh, reconsidering their uh, proposition, namely the assumption that the Earth can be treated as a black body, they just modify the equation of this uh, power balance equation, you see. This is the original power balance equation they, they have to add the, another term here. The first term will represent uh, the sonar radiation from the sun. And the second term would be the greenhouse effect, namely the radiation radiated by the greenhouse gases in our atmosphere. So that by using this equation, we can work out the exact surface temperature, which is the same as observed value, okay. And actually, they actually this is diagram will show you what they, we, we assume. This, this is all, by the way, there are different version of the greenhouse effect. This is called the greenhouse 1.0. That is the earliest uh, version of the greenhouse effect. Can you see that? Apart from this, uh, apart from this uh, pink, uh, arrows which indicate the outgoing uh, non-wave radiation by the surface, they have put the circle or blanket around the earth formed by these so-called greenhouse gases. But they barely tell people the dominant part of these greenhouse gases is actually wood vapor, not uh, other trace element such as the CO2. Anyway, so these uh, so-called atmospherical blanket can form a layers, invisible layers that can not just absorb the surface radiation, but also radiate back to the surface. So that is called the back radiation. That is the name of back radiation uh, come from. So in this way, they just, uh, in any textbook, they say they has uh, successfully explained that uh, theoretical discrepancy or the temperature difference between the theory and observation by assuming there is a atmospherical blanket. So return to the story for children. So that's house, this house. Of course, the atmosphere does play a certain role in regulate the what we call uh, diurnal variation of surface temperature. Okay. Without the atmosphere, the diurnal uh, variation would be huge. This is a, a simple explanation of this uh, diurnal variation in the presence of atmosphere. That is how the surface temperature on Earth uh, will not change uh, dramatically uh, compared with that in the absence of atmosphere. So that, that, that is certainly uh, the important role played by 
the atmosphere. But today's discussion is not just uh, focused on this uh, diurnal variation. We are talking about the more serious uh, argument. Since 1980s or even 1970s, people gradually focus on CO2 in our atmosphere as a prime target uh, responsible for making the climate change. In doing so, they will argue that the certain amount of CO2 is man-made called uh, anthropogenic greenhouse gases. And this amount of the uh, greenhouse gases keep increase due to the industrialization of the human society. So you can argue that is a, the power plant and is the vehicles on the surface, the airplane, the jet, air jet nine uh, in the sky. And at the most, they are talking about uh, the amount of carbon is doubled or carbon CO2 doubling over one century. That is a new version of greenhouse effect. I call this greenhouse effect 2.0. In this uh, model, they assume that our atmosphere work uh, pretty well without the extra anthropogenic CO2. And because that uh, uh, greenhouse effect will maintain the surface temperature 33 Kelvin above the theoretical prediction. It works well, it's a balance. Now, additional CO2, and uh, in addition to man-made CO2, there are other natural, you can, you can look for that numbers, that huge number of, uh, of naturally uh, CO2 exist. And because of this uh, man-made uh, CO2, and the people say, well, that balance will be disturbed. So the earth will become imbalanced. As a result, phasor greenhouse effect would occur, which eventually would affect or increase the surface temperature. So that is a key issue in the climate change studies. Billion and billion of dollars being injected into that area for people to uh, using computers and uh, and other instrumental uh, approach to uh, to prove to demonstrate that the greenhouse effect, rather than to study the true nature or property of the atmosphere uh, and the surface system. This upper diagram was used in the uh, 1990s. So from here, you can see that uh, there are numbers. So these numbers are all represent the radiation intensity in unit uh, watt per meter square. Yeah. And this is a more recent one. This is a version of, 19, uh, of 2021 version. So basically the argument or the, the greenhouse effect two point zero uh, argues that the solar radiation at the top of atmosphere is about 340, while the, the back radiation by the atmosphere is actually similar or even higher at the surface. Can you see? So in other words, the, based on this uh, hypothesis, the radiation received at the surface of Earth and uh, mostly come from the atmosphere due to this so-called uh, uh, back radiation by the greenhouse gases. Okay. In order to get these numbers correct, they must consider the two uh, power balance conditions. One is power balance condition at the top of the atmosphere. So if you put these three numbers, if upward and downward, you just simply use arithmetics, you can find there's a zero uh, radiation at the top of atmosphere. However, at the surface, according to my recent uh, research, no one has ever uh, obtained a balanced equation 
before my study. Okay. So this number, be careful, is misleading. They claim that the imbalance is less than one watt, which is not true. If you check the, the publication, you will see that the uncertainty in using the balance, the power balance equation at the surface is over 17 watt per meter square. The huge compared with uh, the, uh, the radiation change due to the carbon CO2 doubling, you know, the re radiative forcing associated with uh, CO2 doubling is, is about a three watt per meter square. We can also simplify this diagram into this uh, simpler diagram. Can you see that? I just pick up some keyword, key number here. So if I just enlarge this part, you can see that 340 represents the incoming solar radiation and 300, uh, 279 represents the outgoing infrared radiation from the Earth's at atmosphere. That's okay. However, if you look at this surface, you'll be surprised to see that the back radiation is so strong as 342. It's over 80% of the surface radiation come from the greenhouse gases. In other words, if we just use an energy, just as use the heater, to boil the water and to keep it boiling, right? And uh, with this uh, greenhouse effect model, you could argue that 80% of this uh, the thermal energy come from this uh, back radiation from the hot water above the heater. That implies that you only need to use 20% of extra power to make this uh, burning uh, water continue. Sounds good. Too good to be true. Today we just uh, introduce two type of the greenhouse effect, right? Now, what is the latest explanation? So this is the latest explanation. Simple, but quantitative. Because of gravity, the molecules in the atmosphere are obliged to get in closer with the uh, surface if the temperature is not uh, high enough, right? So that is due to the gravitation. That is a Newton's uh, universal gravitational law determines this uh, atmosphere cannot go uh, to the outer space. It always uh, exists around or closer to the surface. So that is why, as a whole, the atmosphere must be getting warmed because our Earth's surface is uh, closer to 288 Kelvin. Just like if you walk near the hot object, like the bushfire, then you will get hot. That is required by thermodynamics, okay. not other way wrong. Just because you're getting warmed, then you can get in the earth warmer, which is not true. Are you worried about that the cooked egg can burn the pan? And this is more quantitative result. I, if you're interested, please watch my previous video about this uh, uh, latest research on the climate change in which the greenhouse effect is not taken into account, but the quantitative prediction is in agreement with observation. For example, in this particular graph, the atmospherical long wave absorptivity is about 72%. Under this condition, Theoretically, I can generate this curve to represent a different observable uh, quantity. The golden one is outgoing non-wave radiation. Okay. And also this uh, dashed 
the purple line represents the radioactive forcing. Please download the paper and read and let me know. Okay, I will stop this talk by demonstrating this stamp. And although it's not in English, but I'm sure you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> 